Hello, Fort St. John Alliance Church family. Today's five-minute Bible read is Esther. Esther stood before King Xerxes. She had never been inside the royal hall before. She had never seen so much gold and marble and silk, so many finely dressed noblemen, or so many servants. She had never seen the king up close. He had called her, and now he sat on his throne watching her. She tried not to let him see her tremble. Her cousin, Mordecai, waited behind her. Esther's parents had died when she was very young, and Mordecai had raised her. He was the only father she'd ever known. Esther, you are the most beautiful woman in the land, the king said. You are also kind and intelligent. I want you to be my wife. Esther gasped. Mordecai smiled. The king placed a crown on Esther's head. The king gathered all of his officers. I invite you all to a banquet, he said. We will feast on roasted meats, desserts, and fine wine. We will celebrate our new queen, Queen Esther. King Xerxes' most trusted advisor was a man named Haman. Haman demanded that people bow down as he walked by. One day, not long after Esther had become queen, Haman passed through the palace gates. Everyone bowed except for Esther's cousin, Mordecai. I order you to bow like all these other peasants, said Haman, glaring at Mordecai. I bow only before God, said Mordecai. I bow because I worship him. I respect you, Haman, but I do not worship you. This made Haman angry. At the next royal council meeting, Haman announced that a dangerous group of people in the kingdom refused to obey the king's laws. The king did not know that Haman was talking about Mordecai and his family. He issued an order that these disloyal people should be killed. When Mordecai heard the order, he, took, he shook with fear. He could not let Haman kill his family. He raced to the palace to find Esther. You must beg the king to spare us, Mordecai told Esther. But you know the king's rule, said Esther. He does not like anyone, not even me, to speak to him without an invitation. If he does not hold out his golden scepter to show he approves, the uninvited vis visitor can be thrown into prison. If I speak to him and he gets angry, it will make things worse. I will wait for an invitation to the royal hall. Do not wait too long, said Mordecai. We only have a few days. Esther waited. One day passed, then another. On the third day, she could wait no longer. She put on her finest robes and hurried to the hall. Once more, she found herself trembling before the king. My king, said Esther, her voice shaking. You did not invite me here, but I must speak to you. It is important. Esther waited. She watched the king's face. He smiled and held out his scepter. Esther nearly collapsed in relief. Esther knew that the king would be angry if she asked him to change his royal order. Luckily, she also knew that he never turned down a delicious meal. I have prepared a banquet, said Esther. I would like for you and Haman to dine with me. That night, they ate all the king's favorite foods. The king was pleased. Esther wanted to be sure she had won his favor, so she invited the king and Haman to dine, dine with her again the next night. The king and Haman feasted once more on the food Esther had prepared. This was the most delicious meal I've ever eaten, the king told Esther. If you wanted half the kingdom, I would give it to you now. Esther took a deep breath and said, I do not want your kingdom. I only want to save my family. The king frowned. Your family? I do not understand. Yes, said Esther. Soon they will be killed. It is a royal order. King Xerxes turned to Haman. These are the people you said were t a threat to me? Esther's people? You tricked me. No, cried Haman. I did not trick you. I tried to protect you. Surely you believe me. I'm your most, tr most trusted advisor. Not any longer, said the king. He banished Haman from the kingdom so he could never harm Esther or her people.